Welcome to another video. I originally wanted to make this video before yesterday's video, but I felt already wrote that one on the board because the question came to my mind, is it possible to find all possible values of x in which x plus 1 over x is an integer? Because naturally, when you think about it, if you substitute the number 1 for x, you're going to have x equals 1 plus 1 over 1, so you have 1 plus 1 gives you 2. Or if you try negative 1, it's also possible minus 1 plus 1 over minus 1 gives you minus 2. So other than those two cases, can we find other values of x, real values of x, for which x plus the reciprocal of x is an integer? Let's get into the video. So this is a particularly easy exercise because all we have to do is make an assumption that apart from 1 and minus 1, we can find other solutions. So what we're going to say is let this expression be an integer k. So let's begin. Be equal to k, where k is an integer, okay? From here, we're trying to find the values of, <laughs> we don't even know, because we just made a claim that k is an integer, but we don't know what k is, but we're trying to find x. So in a situation like this, assuming we knew what k was, to find x, you just make a quadratic out of this by multiplying every term by x to get rid of this denominator. So let's try and do that, okay? So if we multiply every term by x, this is going to end up being x squared. This is going to be plus 1, and this is going to be kx. If you make a quadratic out of this, you end up with x squared minus kx plus 1 is equal to 0. So now we have one equation with two unknowns. We don't know k, we don't know x, but we're looking for x, okay? And x has to be real. So this is where we narrow things down. So in math sometimes, you just creating restrictions will lead you to the answer. So here, we need x to be real. For you to get a real root in any quadratic equation, we know that the discriminant has to be at least zero. If x is real, then d must be greater than or equal to zero. Remember what d is? Our d is b squared minus 4ac. That's what we say, okay? Which implies that our b squared is going to be k squared, okay? 4ac is going to be 4 times 1, 4 times 1 times 1, which is 4. Minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. So the conclusion, if d is greater than or equal to zero, that means our k squared, which is minus k when you square it, is k squared, minus four is greater than or equal to zero, um, which means that, so we have k squared is greater than or equal to four, and this is only true if if you take the square root of both sides, you're going to have the absolute value of k is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, or we can say k is greater than or equal to, well, that would be a problem. Okay, so when it comes to inequalities, this is a better way to solve this kind of equation. Take the square root of both sides. The square root of a square is the absolute value of the base, whereas the square root of any number is just the principal root, which is the positive version of the square root, right? Okay, so with this, we have a restriction. We're saying, if you're going to put any k here, that k has got to be a number that is two steps from zero. So this means, so absolute value of k greater than or equal to two means that the values that satisfy k, that k 
must be in the set of values from negative, uh, let's do top, 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 negative three, negative two. You are going to skip negative one. You're going to skip zero. You're going to skip one. And then you go to two. Do you see what I'm saying? So this means that if the absolute value of k is greater than or equal to 2, it means k must be two steps away from 0. Okay, that's the meaning of absolute value. The distance of k from 0 is 2. So k is not in this gap. k starts from here, from 2, 3, or from negative 2, negative 3. So the values of k, this is not included. No k. k. And that's what it is. So if you want to use any k for this expression, you must use numbers that are in this set. That's the only way this can be an integer. And with this, life is beautiful. Okay, so now that we have a restriction for k, we can now find what the real values of x are by solving this quadratic equation, which is easy, right? We have x equals, using the quadratic formula, is going to be minus b, which is k, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac is going to be k squared minus 4 over 2a is going to be over 2. And that's the answer. <laughs> okay, so this is it. If x has this property, then x plus 1 over x is an integer. <laughs> you just try it. You just try it. Pick any value of k. So we have x equals this. For absolute value of k greater than or equal to 2. This is the solution. Let me just box it. Now, if in your mind you're saying, huh, that looks suspicious, how are you sure it's going to work? Let's just test, um, instead of me doing the proof of it by repeating and going the opposite direction, let's just pick a weird number. So I've chosen to pick the number negative 7, because negative 7 will be in this set. And what I'm going to do is say, what if k is negative 7? Test. Test k equals negative 7. See what happens. We're going to have x equals um, negative 7. Let's cho choose the plus option just to make life easy. Okay, negative 7 plus the square root of 49 minus 4 divided by 2. Okay, so we want to show that so this is the same thing as x will be negative 7 plus square root of 45 over 2. So we want to show that if you add this number to its own reciprocal like this, you're going to get an integer, always. So it doesn't matter what number you pick, as long as that number is in this set, you are going to have x plus 1 over x being an integer. Okay, let's do it. So look, we're going to have negative 7 plus square root of 45 over 2 plus the reciprocal of this is 2 over negative 7 plus the square root of 45. Now there's so many ways to do this addition. You can rationalize this by multiplying it by its conjugate or you can just do the elementary school multiplication you do the cross multiplication and then you multiply the base. Let's try and see that, okay? So this is gonna be, if I multiply this by this, I'm gonna have negative seven times negative seven gives me 49. Then negative seven times this, then this times this, I'm gonna end up with negative 14 rad 45, okay? And then I am going to have, um, this times this is gonna give me plus 45. Okay, that's this multiplication. Then I'm going to do this. That's going to be plus 4. And I'm going to divide by the product of this 2, which is 2 times negative 7 plus the square root of 45. 
Now pay attention to the top. This is 49. This also is 49. So I have 49 in two places. Okay, so this is gonna be 98 minus 14 rad 45 divided by two times negative seven plus rad 45. Okay, so we know that 14 divides 98 seven times. So we're gonna take out 14. So we have 14 into seven minus 14 rad 45 divided by two into negative seven plus square root of, 40, oh sorry, there's no 14 here. It's gone outside. So here, here we are and you can see the signs here are switched or maybe let's take out negative 14. So this is negative seven and this positive 45. You see this cancels this and two divides this, you end up with negative seven. It's more like you're reversing the process. Like I said, it's the same thing I would have done if I used any arbitrary K. So at this point, just know that if you pick any number, any number that looks like this, when you add it to its reciprocal, you're gonna end up with an integer. And that integer is the number you picked. Okay. Ah, never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.